Hey guys, I just found a video from Psalm 86. She's been retired for eight or nine years now, but she has a video that explains that William Branham's serpent seed doctrine comes from the Kabbalah. For those of you who don't understand what's going on right now, all the leaders of the New Apostolic Reformation have been practicing the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the doctrine of the fallen angels. It's the things that the fallen angels taught to mankind that got brought together in Babylon. And anytime you hear that there are seven heads of the beast, this is where you're finding it. That's Babylon. This teaching comes from Babylonian teachings. So when scripture says that here is wisdom, the seven heads on which the woman sits, which is the whore of Babylon, the seven heads are seven mountains. The seven heads of the beast of Revelation is the seven mountain dominion theology from Bethel. So this is more proof according to well, uh, Manly P. Hall and Albert Pike, the Kabbalah is the foundation upon which all Freemason teachings are based, and Freemasonry is the religion of Lucifer. So, if you understand that the religion of Lucifer is the one that teaches the Kabbalah, and now William Branham is teaching the Kabbalah, and that the New Apostolic Reformation is based on Kabbalistic teachings, they are teaching the things of the fallen angels inside the NAR. It has nothing to do with the scripture. If you think about it logically, the people who are the wolves in sheep's clothing who are leading you astray have to have a solid foundation of a teaching that they can be able to go to all the time. They're not just making up everything. They've learned this through these people. They're just repeating their indoctrination into the Kabbalistic mindset of Freemasonry. When Bill Johnson says it's a great thing for people to go to Freemason lodges, that's where they really need revival. There's an issue inside the New Apostolic Reformation, and everybody's turning a blind eye to the fact that it's Freemasonry and that they worship Lucifer, and everything they're teaching is Luciferianism. Here's a man who my researcher friend directed me to. He grew up in William Branham's cult, hence... Oh, sorry, guys. But those in the cult of William Branham also believe that you must have faith in hidden mysteries in order to be the true bride of Christ. One of the most fundamental mysteries, believe it or not, comes directly from these ancient scrolls of Gnostic text. Kabbalah teaches that in the Garden of Eden, there was a hidden mystery that was written in between the lines of the Bible. In the book of Zohar, one of the most fundamental books in Jewish mysticism, known as Kabbalah, the writer writes this. Nakash infected his impure semen into Eve, and she absorbed it. Therefore, when Adam had intercourse with her, she bore two sons, one from the impure side, Nakash, and the other one from the side of Adam. And Abel, the second, bore resemblance to the higher form, and Cain, the first, to the lower. Sound familiar? Kabbalah teaches that El Shaddai, which literally translates to the God of Abraham, Kabbalah teaches that it means the breasted God, or the God who nurtures. And though this may seem unrelated to what we're talking about, we find that it is deeply intertwined with the theology of serpent seed. Why? Because this teaching was not new to the Gnostics either. Clarence Larkin had writings in his literature entitled The Trail of the Serpent. Coincidentally, William Branham's very next sermon, had he not died, was to be entitled The Trail of the Serpent. 
If he truly was going to plagiarize Clarence Larkin once more, Branham would have been in between a rock and a hard place. Because like many others before him, Larkin studied the ancient civilizations and the ancient cultures, and more specifically, ancient idolatry. From ancient worship of the breasted god, the Ashtoreth, to the many Greek gods and, and many other pagan religions, we find many cultures that are engaged in idolatry who also believe that evil being implanted into the human race through sexual intercourse. And we also find many, many more similarities between ancient Baal worship and these Gnostic cults. The Gnostic Book of Enoch. The book that William Branham copied as Revelation, that Enoch walked with Noah for 500 years, teaches that fallen angels impregnated human women to produce the giants, very similar to the union of Uranus and Gaia who brought the titans into the earth. But what is interesting is that the union between these false gods and humans brought forth demigods. This is very similar to the Gnostic belief that the serpent produced a different type of offspring through Eve. The greatest of the demigods in Greek mythology is known as Heracles, known for his superhuman strength. Many of you are familiar with the story. But Heracles was not new to Greek mythology. His fame spread throughout the entire city of Tyre. It was a port city that influenced the ancient world with pagan religion. Ezekiel stood before the king of Tyre and condemned him, calling him the serpent himself in the Bible. The same exact myth that we now know as Hercules, the same exact myth is found centuries before the Greek gods in the form of Melkart, or as it was called, the Bale of Tyre. Sometimes it is referred to as the Tyrian Heracles. Worship of this false god included child sacrifice and worship of symbols in the zodiac. Still, this was nothing new. It is said to have descended directly from the Asheroth. The pil pillars of Hercules or Heracles, the pillars of Melkart, and the pillars of the Ashtaroth are the same exact worship, the same exact child sacrifice, temple prostitution, both bisexual and homosexual. Many other deviant forms of worship were an abomination before God, but they seem to be included in all of these false religions all of which have the same theology. The question I have is, did William Branham really know his ABCs? Did he know the ABCs of the Bible that we read? If he incorporated these Gnostic beliefs, if he incorporated Baal worship into his theology, taken from other cult leaders, taken from other Bible translators who denied the deity of Christ, did he really have the proper foundation to what he called the ABCs? In Genesis 2, we find the, the very most, the very first ABC of the Bible. It's the creation story. Genesis 1 tells the order of creation, and Genesis 2 recaps the order of creation, but it expands a little bit more into the human aspect. It says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And the Lord planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. 
The tree of life was in the midst of garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Good for food. Notice, this also is before the woman is created. And man is formed from the dust and became a living, breathing creature. This is a stark contrast between the thought of Kabbalah. Kana Kabbalah teaches this. In Kabbalah, Adam and Eve are viewed as symbols of male and female energy. As in Tibetan or Tantric Buddhism, and as a metaphor for the primordial vessel whose existence came before creation, thus encompassing all of the souls of humanity to come. The presence of the serpent, considered a fragmenting force, was necessary for creation, otherwise all would unite with God. This gave man the opportunity of earning the light of his own. In Kabbalah, it's referred to as the light. In, in Gnosis, it's referred to as the light. In the cult of William Branham, it's re referred to as the light. And this is different from the way Paul describes the light. They're talking about a spiritual thing whenever the Bible just said that it was a living, breathing man, a creature. And coincidentally, what I just read you from Kabbalah, William Branham taught the very same thing. He said, so then when God made his first man, he was a spirit man. He was something on the order of God or the son of God, the Logos. He was the first man. Branham said that in 1953. So compare the three. We have what the Bible says. We have the Kabbalah which doesn't match the Bible at all. And we have William Branham, who matches the Kabbalah instead of the Bible. It seems as though Branham did have his ABCs, but he had the very same ABCs that people like Madonna, the former queen of pop. Madonna, the one that you see wearing the skimpy outfits on television, believes in this Jewish mysticism called Kabbalah. And William Branham believes the very same thing that she believes. The very thing that Paul condemned, the very thing Irenaeus devoted his life to remove from the Christian church. And yet we have pastors in this cult who are teaching Baal worship as though it comes from God. Let's continue. Genesis says, A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers, the name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of the land is good. Medellam and onyx stone are there. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You shall surely eat of every tree in the garden, the trees that had fruit that are made for food. But of the tree of knowledge and good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it, that day you will surely die. So at this point, the tree of life, the tree of knowledge, and the first man were all formed. And everything that God had made, everything that God had commanded, was good. And if Kabbalah is correct, if William Branham were pointing you to correct truth when he pointed you to Kabbalah, and if it was correct and the fruit is sex, but the woman has not yet been created, who exactly is God telling Adam not to have sex with? Himself? Let's continue. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that a man will be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. 
not a slave, a helper. Out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever a man called every living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all the livestock and all the birds of the heaven and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed it up in the place with his flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Inter interesting note here, William Branham said that today <laughs> men have one less rib than a woman, <laughs> and all of the cult, even the medical community, mostly still believe this. But regardless, Adam said, the man said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. So, again, we have this statement, and they shall become one flesh. What is the writer telling us here? This is before the fall. If sex were so wrong, as is taught in Gnosticism, if sex was so wrong, why are they telling that Adam and his wife became one flesh, and they were not ashamed? This is not one spirit, as Kabbalah teaches and William Branham regurgitated. This is one flesh. This is two people, and you know the rest. In Acts 17.26, the Bible speaks against Gnostic teachings. It speaks against Jewish mysticism. It condemns those who created the endless genealogies and believed in the serpent seed. It says this, And he made, God, and he made every man of every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined plotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. From one man. Let's reread that. And he made from one man. Adam. Genesis 4 tells how Adam knew Eve. And I'll ask you, what does that mean? When it says, he knew Eve. And she conceived a man from the Lord. Which William Branham cast it aside as misinterpretation. But if we continue reading... God asked Cain directly, where is your brother? This doesn't make any sense that the entire Kabbalah, the entire Jewish mysticism, all of these hidden mysteries, none of them make any sense. You have to twist your own brain and be, become programmed to be able to even believe it. And I know because I was there, I did believe this stuff. 